So the idea is this brushless DC motor in the back can spin the drive into the speedometer to make the odometer and the speedometer work. The speedometer is just an eddy current style. So you spin a uh, magnet and a piece of metal around a bell, it creates an eddy current and it pulls the bell over, which is what's connected to the needle. So in this case we have power on the red, black on the ground, blue is the PWM in, yellow is the pulses out. This particular motor does nine pulses per turn on the output. And then the white wire is the direction. So this particular brushless motor has an internal speed controller. So we just need to provide a power and a PWM signal. The higher the duty cycle, the faster it spins. And then it outputs a nine pulses per turn. So the code on a 10C 3.2 is outputting Let's see, let me show this here. The values on the left are the actual uh, time between pulses. The value on the right is the commanded value that we're trying to reach. And the value in the middle is the 10 bit uh, duty cycle scale. So we're at uh, 580 of 1023. So as the value on the right gets smaller, the speed has to increase and in order to do that you have to increase the duty cycle to get you to the, your target value so that's what we have going on here so this right now is just set up in a mode where the code adds one mile an hour per second and calculates a new timer value and then the, the normal code that's running is trying to match the value on the right to the value on the left by increasing or decreasing the duty cycle in the center there. So we can take it out of this mode And we could just command 60 miles an hour and it'll shoot for 5240 and you'll see on the left it'll get in a dead band around 5200 5240 which then gives us 60 miles an hour a little bit of wobble delta it's an old gauge set plus my gears probably aren't quite concentric but it seems to be working All right, so here's a better look at the back of the dash. I designed in SolidWorks and 3D printed this bracket on that poor machine over there. Uh, these gears and whatnot, we pulled out of a printer, a home printer, what they tore apart years ago, and uh, have the rest of the gears are in these little totes here, buried in the bottom down there. So I was able to come up with a gear ratio that seems to work well. I added this washer to give this system a little bit more mass, which helps stabilize everything a little bit better. So then we had to 3D print some little uh, uh, spacers to get the right diameter from this inside diameter to the outside diameter of the motor shaft, which is a three millimeter. So same deal here. We had to adapt to the back of So what we ended up doing is tapping this hole down in here. It's a square hole but uh, we just ran it with a, a 632 and then that allows us to use any of these 632 type screws to go down in there so ideally the way this works is this is one I printed out here so this will go on there and then the gear would go on top of that and then when you run the bolt down through there hopefully everything self-centers so you can see that ledge in there is supposed to sit down into this hole and capture both the ID and the OD which is supposed to kind of help center it when you put the gear on there plus when you run the bolt down through the top that also kind of helps squish everything together and self centers so that seems to be 
All right, what's up guys? This is uh, about a week later from the previous clip you just saw. So we've made a little headway here. Um, this is a breakout board, well, this is a board I designed for the dual fuel pump driver. I ended up having to go back to the older uh, setup. So I was able to repurpose this. It already has a CAN transceiver. I added that TIP31, which is just an NPN transistor. A Darlington pair type. So we still have the back of the dash. Where we have the motor drive spinning the input into the speedometer. Here's the coolant gauge, the back of the coolant gauge. So now we have wiring running around where we're feeding 5 volts. There's a 5 volt regulator underneath the bottom. 5 volts is being fed into the back of the dash. And then we're PWMing with that tip 31 to then run the position on the gauge. So like for instance right now we're showing about a quarter hot. So I can come up here and I can enter in a value of say 90. And then you'll see the gauge will begin to move to into position. It should go to about half hot. So what's neat is I'll be able to uh, correlate a canvas message from the coolant temp to a position on the needle so where before you really had no idea what half hot was it could be 210 it could be 220 it could be 240 you have no idea what half hot is in reality so what I can do now is I can correlate what the value will be to get the temperature gauge so I can correlate that to an actual human temperature so I can say half hot is 210 and then I can say, uh, say quarter hot will be, uh, say 180 or 190. And a third hot could be 200. So I'll have a little bit more uh, a control over what I see. And then so far the uh, speedometer itself still works. Granted, it's going to be kind of janky right now because I'm just commanding a speed instead of it being incremental, like when you're driving, how it'll come up and down. But I can go from 60 to 50, and it gets there pretty quick. I say 80. It's got a little bit of wobble to it, but generally it's pretty close. 55. And I can shut it off. So, so far so good. So I think the next idea is we will uh, button it all together. I will make a cover for that and a cover for this to keep the elements off of it and just other wiring and crap that's in the car from rubbing on it. And we'll see if we can get it in the car one of these days. All right, so 3D printed a cover. Uh, I got the Tensi 3.2 and this uh, base screwed onto the back of the dash. So now I also have a ground wire, this purple wire under here, loops around, connects to this purple wire. There we go, that guy there. So here's the power. So all I need to do in the car is hook this up to a 12 volt source. I have a ground on this side, a ground on this side and then hook the CAN bus wires up to the CAN bus, figure out how I'm going to do that, and we can test it. Ooh, that's dark. All right, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? See my hairy chest? What's up, guys? Back in the car, I uh, got the CAN bus sorted out. It's having some issues with that. Turns out, in code, you actually have to check to see if there's messages available. Imagine that. So I got that squared away, so we're starting to receive CAN messages now, and we can actually do things with the messages and the data that's in the messages. So uh, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. I got the coolant gauge finally sorted out and working correctly. So when the fan kicks on at like 205, I'm at about half temp, which is kind of where I guessed it would be. So uh, a third hot is going to be like 180 or something. So the way it's set up is that the speedo won't do anything until we actually break six miles an hour. Speed 
know, calibration might be a little off because of orientation. Like if you rotate, if you rotate the dash on its back, it will uh, hone in on a different speed than if you set it on its uh, bottom. So I'm not really sure what the deal with that is, but.
uh, a mechanical or a, a physical mile. It was mechanically uh, calculating a mile on the odometer correctly. So that was working. It was just that the needle would end up with an offset. So I've seemed to fix that also with a pull down resistor. With a pull down resistor, it seems to fix that. So now when you turn the key on, the motor doesn't spool up right away before the microcontroller to come online. Uh, so I'll show you real quick how the speedo's working. Delta in the mechanism. Some speeds it's pretty solid, others it's got this wobble. 45 miles an hour has this wobble. But uh, I think for what it is and what we're doing, pretty much sending CAN bus messages from the engine controller. It has vehicle speed mixed into it along with coolant temp. And then we're able to uh, drive the motor to a designated speed which correlates to a mile an hour and an odometer uh, rate and so it seems to be working uh, this was probably my most mechanically involved project but it's it's working